problem uh, we are distributing the names of the um, n students in the class as a permutation to the same students um, so part one is basically asking you to prove that you can always decompose uh, such a permutation into groups that look like a cycle where in each cycle um, there is a student that you can start with a1 who has the name of a student a2 who has the name of another student a3 and this goes on and on and on up to the student ak and then ak has the name of a1 so this looks like a cycle and this is basically asking you to prove that uh, you can always um, decompose the permutation into such cycles okay so let's follow the hints and see how this works Let's just pick a student, uh, which is inside our group, and name that student A1. Now, A1 has the name of a student. Maybe um, it has its own name, or it has another person's name. So if it has another person's name, uh, go to that person and name that person A2. Now, A2 uh, has also the name of a person. Uh, that person could be one of A1 or A2, but um, if it's not, continue and go to A3. Continue doing this until you arrive at a student who has the name of a student we've previously seen. So AK has the name of a student that we've previously seen. Um, so let's see what happens if AK has the name of AI. So there is an AI in the middle here. And AK has the name of AI. But then look at AI minus 1. AI minus 1 has the name of AI and AK has the name of AI. But we know that the name of each student was printed exactly once. So this can't happen because uh, AI's name can be in the hands of only one person. So this shows that uh, as long as there is an AI minus 1, AK cannot hold the name of AI. Each person has a previous person except A1. So it must be true that AK has the name of A1. So this proves that we have this cycle structure. Now, um, to prove that this is the whole group, we need to show that there is no other person outside this group uh, who can make a connection with this group. So obviously no one in this group has the name of another person outside the cycle. Uh, so uh, we, we also need to prove that for every student outside the cycle, B, B doesn't have the name of a student inside the cycle. But this is obvious because inside the cycle, uh, there is a person. So for each person inside the cycle, there is another person who inside the same cycle who is holding that person's name. So uh, the card containing the name of each person in this cycle is in the hands of another member inside the cycle. So it cannot be in the hands of B. So this proves that there is no other member outside the cycle that can be in the same groups. Uh, so this shows that this is a group by itself. And now you can apply this whole thing to other people outside the cycle uh, to find other cycles. And this in general proves that any permutation can be decomposed into such cycles. Um, this was not necessary in the in part one to prove that we can decompose into cycles, but showing that uh, starting from a person you can arrive at a cycle was the necessary part. Okay, uh, so now let's go to part two. In part two, we are looking at a particular student, X, and we are interested in the probability of this x being in a group of size k. Okay. Now, <clears throat> how many ways there are to distribute cards um, in, uh, into the hands of the students? Well, obviously, each distribution of cards corresponds to exactly one permutation. So there are exactly n factorial ways to distribute cards to the students. Now, out of these distributions, we need to find those uh, that make x be in a group of size k. So, 
How many, how many ways can we realize that? Well, using the results of part one, we know that in order for x to be a, in a group of size k, we must find exactly k minus one other persons. Um, so let's name them a1, a2, up to a k minus one. We need to find these k minus one people and link them like this. X has the name of a1, a1 has the name of a2, a2 has the name of a3, and so on, and then ak minus 1 has the name of x. Note that in this, uh, when, when we fix a1 up to ak minus 1, we are also fixing their ordering. So their ordering is important because uh, that tells you how people are holding the cards of um, the, uh, the other people. So in how many ways can we form this cycle? Well, there is n minus 1 choose k minus 1 ways to fix, uh, to choose a set of k minus 1 people that are going to be in the same group with x. So there is this many ways to choose the set of a1 up to a k minus 1. And then we have to order them somehow. How many orderings are there? There are k minus 1 factorial orderings. Um, by the way, uh, this is n minus 1 because we have already fixed x. So x cannot be one of these. Um, so we have to choose k minus 1 members from n minus 1 remaining members. Okay, so this is the number of ways we can choose k minus 1 members and order them. And now for the rest of the cards, we can distribute the remaining n minus cards to the remaining n minus k people however we want right? Uh, and that doesn't affect this group. So there are n minus k factorial ways to distribute the remaining cards. So we need to multiply by that as well. Okay, so this is the number of uh, card distributions that result in x being in a group of size k. And then, of course, we need to divide that by the total number of uh, card distributions, which is n factorial, in order to get the probability. Now, this simplifies a lot. Uh, let's do it. So, um, here we have n minus 1 factorial um, divided by k minus 1 factorial and then n minus k factorial, that's just n minus 1 choose uh, k minus 1, uh, multiplied by k minus 1 factorial, multiplied by n minus k factorial. So as you can see, this goes with, so there was also an n factorial here. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the, n mi the k minus 1 factorial goes away, and also goes away the n minus k factorial. And what you get is just n minus 1 factorial over n factorial, which is just 1 over n. So it's quite surprising that no matter what k is, the probability of this student being in a group of size k is just 1 over n. Uh, of course, these probabilities have to sum up to 1. Uh, you can use that as a sanity check, uh, because this student has to be exactly in one of the groups of size. So um, the event that this student is in a group of size 1, the event that this student is in a group of size 2, up to the event that this student is in a group of size n, these events partition the probability space, the sample space. So their probabilities have to sum up to 1, and of course the probability of each one of them is 1 over n as we calculated, and they do sum up to 1. Um, so that's just a sanity check to make sure that um, our answer was correct.